So last week we talked about the Pentecostal power of the Holy Spirit coming up on uh, the first disciples. Today we're going to carry that forward and talk about doing ministry together in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're going to uh, hear the scripture this morning from Matthew chapter 9 verses 25 through 10, 23. And I'm going to read from the message version. Then Jesus made a circuit of all the towns and villages. He taught in their meeting places and reported kingdom news and healed their diseased bodies, healed their bruised and hurt lives. When he looked out over the crowds, his heart broke. So confused and aimless they were, like sheep with no shepherd. What a huge harvest, he said to his disciples. And how few workers on your knees and pray for harvest hands. The prayer was no sooner prayed than it was answered. Jesus called 12 of his followers and sent them into ripe fields. He gave them power to kick out evil spirits and to tenderly care for bruised and hurt lives. And this is the list of the 12 that he sent. Simon, they called him Peter, or the rock, Andrew, his brother, James, Zebedee's son, and John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax man, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Jesus sent his 12 harvest hands out with this charge. Don't begin by traveling to some far-off place to convert unbelievers. And don't try to be dramatic by tackling some public enemy. Go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out the demons. You have been treated generously. So live generously. Don't think that you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. You don't need a lot of equipment because you are the equipment. And all you need to keep going is three meals a day and travel light. When you enter a town or village, don't insist on staying in a luxury inn, but get a modest place with some modest people and be content there until you leave. When you knock on a door, be courteous in your greeting. If they welcome you, be gentle in your conversation. If they don't welcome you, quietly withdraw. Don't make a scene. Shrug your shoulders and be on your way. You can be sure that on Judgment Day, they'll be mighty sorry. But it's no concern of yours now. Stay alert. This is hazardous work that I'm assigning to you. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourselves. But be cunning as a snake, inoffensive as a dove. And don't be naive. Some people will impugn your motives. Others will smear your reputation. Just because you believe in me. Don't be upset before they, when they haul you before the civil authorities. Without knowing it, they've done you and me a favor. Given you a platform for preaching the kingdom news. And don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. Because the right words will be there. The spirit of your father will supply the words. When people realize it is the living God you are presenting and not some idol that makes them feel good, they're going to turn on you. Even people in your own family. There is a great irony here, proclaiming so much love and experiencing so much hate. But don't quit. Don't cave in. It is all well worth it in the end. It is not success you are after in such times, but survival. Be survivors. Before you've run out of options, the Son of Man will arrive. This is the true word of God for the beloved people of God. Praise be to God. 
As we come into this bit of scripture, we read that Jesus had been making a circuit of the towns and the villages. And as he toured these towns and villages, he taught and he healed. And Jesus said, the harvest is great. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. On your knees and pray for harvest hands. Now Jesus is meeting with his disciples at this point. He's meeting with those who are following him. He's meeting with those who are close to him. You might say he is meeting with his local church. And Jesus does something with that local church. Because Jesus is not content for those disciples to continue following him around Galilee and watching what Jesus is doing. Jesus sends them out to do the same kinds of things. They become sent people. They are the harvesters that Jesus prayed for. And Jesus gave them power. Or some translation says he gave them authority. He gave them authority to kick out evil spirits and to care for bruised and hurt lives. He says, go to the lost, confused people right here in the neighborhood. Tell them that the kingdom is here. Bring health to the sick. Raise the dead. Touch the untouchables. Kick out demons. You have been treated generously, so live generously. So that's where the disciples were at the time that Jesus sent them out. Where are we today? Where are we who claim to be God's people? Place is not so much about geographic location, but place is about social location relative to others as we live in ministry in Christ's name and in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the last half century or so, our physical locations and our social networks have been closely linked. But that's not so much the case now in the 21st century, especially now that we are post-COVID. With transportation and communication advances in our world, geographic locations and social locations may actually have very little to do with each other. Our world has changed and it is still currently changing. And I wonder how do these changes and our social locations impact ministry. The scripture says the disciples went to the lost sheep of Israel and they proclaimed the kingdom of God by announcing peace and offering healing and confronting evil powers. In other words, they offered themselves to others, for others, and they lived with those others. <coughs> Excuse me. How do we address evil and hurting today? How do we offer ourselves to others, for others, and with others? And Jesus sent these first disciples to the lost sheep of Israel. But after the resurrection, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, Jesus expanded that mission to send disciples to the ends of the world, to Jerusalem, to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so this began with these disciples offering themselves to others, for others, and living with those others. But as we proceed in the 21st century church, we have to ask the question, how do we go out 
and address evil and hurting in our world today? Are we offering ourselves to others? Are we offering ourselves for others? On behalf of others? And are we offering ourselves with others? Our place in ministry is together. It is together with others. Ministry, you see, is a combined effort. You know, a lot of the ministry that we read about in the Gospels is Jesus went around Galilee and even Judea and involved eating together. And as we go through the book of Acts and we see the development of the early church, they gathered around meals. Because eating together is a sign of sharing life together. It is a sign of hospitality. And these disciples would share life together and invite others to the table. Now we can't come together in a community meal right now, but we pray that soon we will. And as we prepare to come back physically, let us be creative in how we share the gospel with this community. In whatever way our, the circumstances present themselves for us to share with those who are hurting, with those who are being bombarded by evil. We are called to do ministry together. 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10 says, But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do His work and to speak out for Him to tell others of the night and day difference He made for you from nothing to something, from rejected to accepted. So what then does ministry look like for us? Ministry is not just teaching others, but it also includes serving others, praying for others, and praying with others. Teaching is also living life together, serving one another, and coming together in community. And I have to ask the question, how is ministry with others different from ministry to others or ministry for others. We've talked a lot in the past year about starting dinner church. And we might think of that as ministry to others or maybe ministry for others, feeding those who need a meal and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. But what, what, what we would need to do is to expand that to become ministry with others where they have a role to participate and everybody is a minister and everybody gets ministered to in the process. I have been privileged to be in ministry with many of you for the past four years. Some of you are a little bit newer here than the last four years. But I've still been privileged to be in ministry with you. And what are some of those ministries that we have engaged in together? How do we engage in ministry with people both in the church and outside of the church? Certainly our Good Sam Ministries is an opportunity to engage in ministry with people outside of the church. And we've been, begun looking at how do we expand that ministry to become a financial rehabilitation ministry. 
our ministry with the nursing home residents, our back to school and angel tree ministries for the children in the uh, schools that are less advantaged. And we have an opportunity to come in and, and to share the love of Jesus Christ and to, and to, to love upon them extravagantly and to share the message of Christmas or our camp in the community where we can engage in the children of our neighborhood right here on our property with fun activities and sharing the stories of Jesus and worship times and even communion. And it grieves our hearts that we're not able to engage and camp in the community this year, but, but we have come to the conclusion that camp is where the heart is. And so we're preparing five weeks of take-home packets for our campers to come in a drive through fashion and pick up a packet each week that will have activities for them to do at home and crafts to do at home and, um, and even videos for them to participate in camp from their own homes. We may be calling upon you to come and help distribute packets or help distribute food on, on one of the Fridays of the summer when we will uh, be providing food. And then we look forward to 2021 when we can come back together physically in camp. Or our dinner church dream, which again is on hold because of the requirements for safety for to keep the, the spread of COVID down. But one day, maybe we can engage in dinner church with our community. How can St. Mark move forward in ministry with each other? How can you move forward with your new pastor? How can you move forward with this community? How can you take the good news of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and confront evil and bring healing to broken and hurting hearts in, in your Jerusalem, in your Judea and Samaria, and all the way to the ends of the earth. In other words, how can we better fulfill our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? I want you to join in ministry with Michelle. And she comes in to be your pastor. I know for some folks it's a stretch to receive a woman as a pastor. But I want to tell you this one thing. That Jesus Christ came to reverse the curse of Eden. And one of the curses of Eden was not just so that you will die if you eat of the fruit, but part of that curse was that women would be subservient to men. And praise God, Jesus Christ came and reversed that curse. In fact, if we look through the Gospels, the first evangelists were women. The Samaritan woman at the well ran into town and told, I have met the Messiah. Mary went to the tomb on Easter morning and she ran back to town and she told the disciples that, that Jesus was not in the tomb. It is our Methodist heritage Really, looking all the way back to Susanna Wesley, that we have celebrated the role of God's anointing women to be proclaimers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How can you fulfill the call of every member in ministry together. Because we're not here just to get fed, but we are here to be able to feed others. How can we tell the story?
stories of Jesus Christ. How can we tell about the difference that Jesus has made in our lives from nothing to something? From ashes to beauty because of Jesus Christ. And how can we share those stories in places like camp in the community and dinner church and nursing homes and even in the parking lot after school or through our Good Sam programs? I've even talked to some of you about class meetings and going back to, to small group gatherings where we can encourage each other and share our stories about answering the question on a regular basis. How is it with my soul? We need to seek out ways to do ministry with our neighbors. And we need to look for ways to serve the community and tell the story of grace. And I wonder what other fresh expressions are there that will get us outside of the building and into this community at large. You are the ministers of this church. There's a sign right out here beside the sanctuary that says St. Mark United Methodist Church Minister Dave Grant. And I so want to change that to minister everybody. You have a pastor who dearly loves you. And you will get a pastor in a couple of weeks who will also dearly love you. And I pray that you will join with her in ministry and serve together as the twelve did. And serve together as you have served together in these last four years. And go and make disciples. Go and be world changers. Go and be transformed. Go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. Amen.